Hello, I'm Alan at the Overland Legend. In 2016, the Defender was discontinued, so you can only buy them used now. They came in many different variations, even though they look the same. But trying to buy one now is, is a bit tricky and can be quite expensive. So in this video, I'm going to share my buying guide on how to buy a used Defender. The first Defenders produced in 1985 didn't carry the Defender badge. They were called Land Rover 110 and Land Rover 90, as well as a 127 model. They had V8 and 2.5 petrol and 2.5 turbo diesel engines, with 4-speed and later 5-speed LT77 gearboxes. They still had the split doors like the Series 3. Then in 1990 the Defender badge was introduced and 200 TDI engines and 5-speed LT85 gearboxes were introduced. You can tell the TDI apart by the air intake being on the left and not on the right. From 1985 to 1999 the 300 TDI engine was introduced as well as a locally developed BMW 2.8i petrol engine all running through a refined R380 5-speed gearbox. The 300 TDI was more refined than the 200 TDI and has been one of the most popular Land Rover engines. They were the last non-electric type engines to be introduced and have proved to be quite reliable and cost effective to maintain. In 1999, the TD5 was introduced, which was quieter and smoother and produced slightly more power than the 300 TDI. However, it used more fuel and had some electronic management. The R380 gearbox was slightly uprated for this new engine. In 2003, Land Rover added a strengthened one-piece rear door, new style mags, cup holders and central locking. The TD5 is also claimed to be a favourite Land Rover engine and was used up until 2006. In 2007, the Defender received the last major upgrade with significant changes. The vent flaps in the firewall were shut off to fit the new dashboard and the bonnet was raised to accommodate the new engine. The new 2.4 litre Puma engine and gearbox was derived from the Ford Transit van. Drivetrain changes included ABS and traction control. The interior was also upgraded with forward facing rear seats. In 2011 a more refined 2.2 litre Puma engine was introduced. And then finally the Defender was stopped uh, production in January in 2016. Hi, just to give a shout out to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. If you like my videos, make sure you hit the notification button so that you can get an update every time I upload a new video. So here I am sitting in a 1997 Defender 90, which I just bought a week ago. It's not the first time I've owned a Defender. It's actually the fourth one I've had. So you'd think I know a thing or two about buying used Defenders, but as the saying goes, you're never too old to learn. Buying this 90 was quite an experience, with Defenders being fairly scarce and, and getting quite expensive. So quite different from the vehicles that I'd bought in the past. There's an official reason for buying this and, the, and an unofficial reason. Official reason is that it's a, it's a nice car that uh, I wanted to get for my son so that he can start learning to drive and then uh, when he's, uh, you know, he can drive on the roads, he'll be able to drive it. Only problem is that, uh, yeah, he's, he's only 13 now. So, well, that's good forward planning, right? Well, that's what I thought. But the, uh, the unofficial reason is that, well, you know, I miss my D90. And I still think the D90 is the coolest Land Rover ever made. And so I'm just quite happy to have another one to drive around. So I want to share with you, you know, what you get uh, for your money these days. So I was looking for a late 1990s Defender TDI or TD5. And that's exactly what I found, this 1997 Defender TDI. It came with a bull bar, with a snorkel, with a roof rack, and an extra fuel tank. And the bodywork, as you can see, looks great. 
Uh, the wheel rims weren't all matching, but the rest of the body from the outside, very good. And I paid 170,000 Rand for it. It's the TDI engine. This engine is a replacement engine, so it's not the original engine that was in here. And it's only uh, done about uh, 10,000 Ks on since it was replaced. Still looks quite good. Nice and clean. So everything inside the engine bay looks really good. These uh, bearings in the idlers, um, this one and, uh, and that one over there, uh, they're making a little bit of noise. Underneath the vehicle looks quite good. It's nice and clean, which for a Land Rover is not always a good thing, but uh, when you're buying secondhand or a used vehicle, it's nice. Gives you an idea that the vehicle has not had that hard a life, and uh, if it has, it's been look looked after. On the front end, we've had some work done on the bearings, um, and some of the shafts have been replaced on both sides, and the steering and everything is really nice, so working quite well. So underneath all looking good dash console looks quite good just a little mark over there we had some stick on the speedo and you can see it's got uh, 300 and basically 30,000 so that's the mileage of this vehicle okay let's have a look at what we've got here from the outside in the seat base is a little bit tired the foam's tired, a little bit of wear on the side and then on the back piece over here. But otherwise the rest of the seat's not too bad condition. Carpet's a little bit dirty. And then these carpets over here also a little bit dirty but all intact. The brake lever has got a bit of rust on it. And then the aircon unit's got some cracks over here. That's broken. Switch is a little bit worn. The rest of the dash not looking too bad. The top of the dash looks quite good. And then these levers are stuck, so we need to sort that out. And then this console over here is also a little bit loose once we sort it out. Steering wheel not too bad. It's got a cover on the top. I don't know what's underneath, but uh, actually not not in bad condition. And get inside on this side here the uh, indicator lever and the headlight and the brights a little bit uh, this thing's a little bit wobbly so that's worn out you can see the original light switch is not here anymore so that's gone rest of the aircon some vents missing over here and the aircon's not fitted properly so we need to sort that out Gear lever knobs a bit wobbly. Some other radio in here, it's not the original one. And then the uh, vent uh, knob is also broken off there. Otherwise, it looks alright inside. The seat's not too bad on the left hand side. And then the gear lever. Um, gate at number at uh, five uh, at the fifth gear is, is missing, so we need to have a look at that. The diff lock is also a little bit loose, need to that needs to get sorted out. The cubby need to replace that lock, and then the cubby is also a little bit worn. On the top, the headlining pretty much intact, dirty and sagging. And the lights are in place, handles at the back, so everything's complete there. The rear seats are a little bit worn, both sides, and the carpet uh, that was at the back is missing. And then this uh, is a TDI, it's supposed to have the this base supposed to be higher, so the guy modified it so he could put his seat back a little bit, so that's something um, that's a little bit different. Not too sure how strong it is, maybe need to have a look at that. 
broken in the back door. It's got a bit of a crack in it. Um, that's from that spare wheel carrier. And then there's some wires at the back there. The door covers don't look too bad. Just the switch. Put some modifications there, but otherwise it's just intact. A little bit dirty. Left hand door covers uh, got one or two little tears in. The scariest part about this vehicle when I bought it was it had some uh, system to start it because uh, I think the alarm had given some problem and so the guy had bypassed it. So he had installed this uh, switch over here which you would uh, switch across and then there was a button under the dash that was connected to this wire and uh, when you press that the, the vehicle would start so that was um, yeah not uh, not ideal anyway that's uh, been taken out already so I've sorted that out thanks to the, the help from my brother but there's still a few wires in here that I'm gonna have to fix up and that's a problem with these vehicles is you know when they get a bit older guys have put in all sorts of stuff so there's something over here, I don't know what this is, but uh, it doesn't look good, so we're going to have to untangle that. But that's pretty normal for this type of a vehicle, but the, the main wires and everything are still in place, so I don't think it's going to be a big issue to sort this out. So, some lessons learned from buying this vehicle are to pay attention to the details. It can be a bit overwhelming when you're looking at buying a car. There's so many things to remember, and you get quite excited. So it's probably a good idea to have a checklist. But in the end, if you look at the main things, like the bodywork, that needs to be all in good shape. If you look at the interior, the upholstery needs to be complete and can be dirty, but needs to be there so that you don't have to replace anything. And then does the engine sound good and does the drivetrain sound all right? Are there any alarming sounds or very loose items? That should be something that you, you find. Uh, if you find that, it could be a red flag. Other red flags for me are the less complete the vehicle is, the worse it is for me because when you find these older vehicles often the modifications are not done properly and they end up damaging various items and it becomes costly to replace them so the more original it is the better with them becoming scarcer it's uh, and old you know they will be worn but uh, just make sure that they are original um, it can save you a lot of money in the end and, and be sure about all the items that need to be fixed and replaced so that you can work out what the cost is going to be to put it back together. In the end, I'm quite happy with this vehicle. I think we got a good vehicle. The engine runs very well. The, ge the gearbox is a little bit noisy, but it's to be expected for that age. And the small items that are, are missing, I can replace quite easily. And the rest is really just some restoration work. So I'll keep you updated with this vehicle as we work on it and improve it and get it back to its former glory. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and stay in touch so you can see what happens and how we get this landy back to original.